same question over and over and over and over and over and over and over again how does my soft start work I'm gonna need some help to getting it set up for my box can you draw me a diagram yes or I could shoot you a video on how it works and you make that diagram or this explanation applicable to your amplifier now a soft start circuit usually usually is a combination of three parts a contactor a path of resistance and a timer now this is the same for a DC mobile box which is AC off the alternator in, in the first place or any other high voltage amplifier period that has a high voltage rectification circuit in it now the reason I got all this stuff laid out other than those three parts is because you have to understand the sum of the total to get what we're going after here. You have to understand all the parts and you have to be able to visualize the circuit in your head working from source of generation to storage over here with the high voltage capacitor and the bleeder bar that's present. I'm not going to say resistances, I'm not going to say values of any kind because everything is variable in that but the physical operation of a soft start circuit comes down to those three parts so now let's look at it from the top down from the finished product which is post rectified filtered ready for us to do something with it and this passive circuit that sits here and saves your life which is your bleeder when you shut the amp off and you cut the current off clunk the high voltage capacitor still has a charge on it and so what the bleeder does is it takes this down to zero and the reason we got to talk about the bleeder is because it's always presenting a load to the circuit it's always present the power supply this portion going forward has to overcome the value of the bleeder but the bleeder is so minute that all it does is it just grabs electrons and turns them into heat just a small number of electrons and turns them into heat and it's constantly constantly doing that so when you shut the box off its sole purpose in the universe is to keep grabbing those electrons till there's nothing left in your storage device which is your high voltage capacitor so when this gets all the way down to zero that's when this bleeder bar starts to cool off otherwise it's always produ uh, producing heat and generating heat now I'm gonna go through this and hopefully I'm not gonna bore the toenails right off your feet okay but you have to understand the whole circuit and this is a pretty dumbed down version now most of the parts aren't to scale period like your high voltage bridge there's more tricks to this than just taking four diodes and putting them together we're not going to cover that we're going to cover the soft start circuit which is over there but what I'm trying to teach you is that this is a dead short when your electrolytic capacitor, your oil fan capacitor, your filtering device which acts as a resistance to the AC that might be rippling past your diodes which are your one-way check valves in the universe is a dead short when you first turn your box on okay these parts your rectifying ring, your diode ring see this as a dead short so you can't go and slam when you turn on that switch everything is instant right this second 
the electrons come in, they flee through the transformer, through the power of induction, they fly out and they're, okay, so now on this side you got 110 or 220 volts or whatever, these diodes will see this as a dead short. Dead short, because there's no electrons present. Because your bleeder has pulled this all the way down to zero. This is absolutely necessary. And to keep this at zero is absolutely necessary. These capacitors hold enough charge that even with the rest of the circuit disconnected, this will still kill you deader than a doornail. And it's not like, oh, I got buzzed by a little 110. This is bap, your heart explodes, you fall on the floor. Or at the least, throw you into arrhythmia and you're on the floor. And before EMS can show up, you've stroked out or had permanent brain damage. Saying, this is absolutely necessary. We're not going to get into metering. We're not going to get any of that. We're going to cover how the soft start works. So now that we understand at the end of the chain, the very end of the chain of events from where the current comes in to where you can do something with it, this is a dead short. When it first starts, after that, it acts as a capacitor. So what you're actually safeguarding is the plates, actually the little metal mylar film that's on the inside of these, and the captain that acts as an insulator, which is captain's a fancy term for basically saran wrap and paper, <laughs> or aluminum mylar, which is a, a very thin piece of aluminum with captain applied to it, um, protects the plates inside the capacitor and protects your diodes. Because if you take the current and slowly feed it in, slowly feed it into the capacitor bank and let the electrons start to stack on themselves on the plates, this no longer becomes a dead short and the diodes can see this as something that can take the electrons. So you don't have to worry about shorting out your diodes. Without the soft start circuit, you might as well take the positive and negative leads of the diodes and short them together for just a half a nanosecond. But it's still a dead short which can corrode or degrade, not corrode, degrade the diode's job to do its job and it's going to eventually cause it to leak or in some instances it's going to just blow up. These will open up and then you will have a dead short. The output of your transformer will dead short through the diodes, bzz, boom. And that'll back feed through the circuit to your breaker or your fuse and blow your circuit up. It'll blow up the breaker, it'll blow up the fuse. And let's go over here and let's talk about this for a minute. Now, oh, too fast. A lot of guys, I'm a big contactor guy. I'd rather have a tiny little switch that I turn on and the contactors do everything. I'm not the kind of guy that likes to have a breaker on the front of their box as my on off switch. But this is perfectly acceptable. This is what a lot of people do. This breaker represents this contactor. So when you reach down and you when you reach down and you flip on your breaker, bink. It's just like closing this contactor, which you can do with a little switch on the front of your box instead of having to cut a big square ugly hole and screw and solder and same thing. This allows you a physical disconnect from the line. That's why a lot of guys like doing this. I'm not a big fan of it. I believe that the breaker should be something in the panel, at your source, in the house, or there should be a fuse post here, or there be another physical breaker that's sitting there constantly on. This is just a mechanical device. I don't like tying these two together because once this contactor is broken under load, it can't carry its full 30 or 50 or 60 or 100 amps anymore. It can carry just a little bit less. So a couple thousand times down the line, your contactor will actually open up when there's only 30 amps of load, even though it says 60 on the front. Just saying. Not a big fan of this. But I'm putting this in there so everybody can understand their circuit and their amplifier from beginning all the way down here to end. Contactors come in many shapes and forms. A contactor is nothing but an overcharged relay. You're going to have a couple points that sit in an open and closed state. With a coil that moves a conductor point, i.e. the points like what used to be in our old cars, open and closed. These are Allen Bradley. They're 110 volt coiled and they are 
Well, they've got four four positions on them, so it's a, it's a what? It's a what? It's a what? Four pole. So it can flip on and flip off four contact points. Four pole. Okay. This is an Onan um, on timer. And you want to get yourself a timer that is in seconds, not in minutes. Seconds. Because remember, you only have to let the electrons start passing through this slowly to charge up the cap slowly for a first couple seconds, and then you can go ahead and close the contactor. Now, soft start is a very simple circuit. When you close your initial contact point for a high voltage circuit, either via breaker or like in Henry, they used uh, mercury or no, uh, yeah, mercury relays through a power of electromagnetism. They would suck the mercury down and the current would flow through the circuit. When this contactor closes, the electrons that come from the wall will pass through your two leads and they hit this secondary contactor. This part stays relatively the same. You're gonna have a secondary contactor and this is what makes up the soft start. This contactor stays open. Now on some boxes you'll have two bleeder circuits, one on each side, and we're gonna just say for the instance of this video that this is tied straight through. That's gonna be confusing to people. I better change that, hold on a second. I got the magic pixies fixed now. Go straight through. If you're working on a 110 circuit, you always want to switch on the hot side. So this contactor closes, allowing the electrons to flow through on one side of the transformer 100%. Now what you're going to do is you're going to control, control the inrush of current or the quantity of current that flows into the transformer that flows out to the capacitor through the rectifier. Now I like to use these. This is a 1930s, 1940s, 1950s heating coil that plugs into a 110 socket. The reason I like these is because they're on a nice neat little porcelain base. If you have a problem with this coil, you can unscrew it, throw it away, put a new one in its place. This is a personal preference. This isn't an absolute necessity. A lot of guys what they'll do is they'll get themselves a fairly high resistance, high wattage value resistor and they'll put it in its place. Okay, when this contactor closes the current will flow into the circuit and start its path into the transformer. Well, electricity being electricity will always take the path of least resistance. Since this contactor is not closed yet, the electrons will flow through this contactor point, through this wire, down through the conical resistor, back out, and slowly leak their way into the transformer. Same thing with the resistor in place. Slowly leak the electrons through the resistor, and that's all this is. Same thing, except this is air, and this is inside of a ceramic casing. Slowly leak the electrons into the transformer through the diode and slowly let the electrons and the energy start building in the high voltage capacitor. Remember this all happens very fast, speed of light fast, right? So when you have your time on timer, you only need to set this for about three or four seconds at the most because this sucker is going to get scoochum hot. That thing is going to get scoochum hot. The whole point is you want to control the inrush of current going into the capacitor by putting a resistor in its place. Okay? This resistor acts as a shock absorber in many ways. Shock absorber. But really what it's doing is it's resisting the flow of electrons through the transformer, through the diodes, and allowing the electrons to slowly build up inside the high voltage cap. Now this is the most tricky part of the whole circuit. You wire in the timer on one of the legs of the contactor, so after three or four seconds, click. This closes. You have to tie this timer 
to this contactor or to this breaker. When you initiate this process, the electrons that flow from the beginning source at the breaker or the contactor have to energize the timer. The timer will count down. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, and clap! On comes your high voltage, giving the transformer the full current that is available to it from the circuit, fully charging your high volt cap. That's it. That's a soft start circuit, and it's most minimalistic. Clap, clap, charged. A resistor, a contactor, they make these in 12 volt, 24 volt, 110 volt, 240 volt, and on up. So this is in seconds. See that? Seconds. You want to set it for about three or four seconds. Because all you need to do is overcome that initial dead short, and then the circuit will self-stabilize. You can go for longer, you're going to make your coil much hotter, your resistor much hotter, and you're not going to see such a dramatic swing, but when you, when you turn on a, a high voltage box, you're going to hear clap, clap. And we clap, one, two, three, four, clap. That's what you're hearing as these contactors fire down. Guys, that's the self -start, soft start circuit. As most minimalistic as I can make it. Hopefully that was helpful. Now remember, this works the same thing with like three phase. Instead of using um, just one phase of the transformer, one leg, you can use two legs off the transformer. So your contactor is going to kick on two of the legs. You follow along, so you're going to have two bleeder or two resistors or two coils. I said just one. It's the only difference. Because the AC that comes from the alternator, you're still going to have your power supplies. You're still going to have your capacitor bank. You still have to have most of the circuitry present but it's in a 12 volt based platform. The coils will be 12 volt, the timer's gonna be 12 volt, but the current that you're working with coming from the alternator is AC. Gentlemen, hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully uh, I can save somebody from electrocuting themselves or blowing something up. I'll catch you later guys, it's Sunday. I'm gonna go back in the house and be with the family. I'll see ya, bye. Check it out. You'll hear the first contactor, you'll watch the needle slowly rise, second contactor and it'll go to full load. Ready? That's simple. First contactor, secondary contactor. See you guys. Enjoy your day.